There's always, there's still gonna always be arguments. Hold up, you see how hilarious that is? You're trying to be like the white man. Uh -huh. If you mm -hmm. studied your history, you understand that you established the AMP, I'm, I'm which speaking is from the argument of, production. I'm speaking from the argument of they African Americans, no because they don't understand that. That's what they say. Yes, that's their argument. That's why. That's how they further divide But the I'm making my point of that uh -huh. aspect that they would not have no concept of industry mm -hmm. or no concept of business, um, commerce, none of those things without us introducing it to them in the first place. Really? So saying that you're imitating a white man by using intelligence, logic, industry is actually contradictive and proving that you have no knowledge of your own Definitely. history. And that's why I'm because you from gave the, it to the, them. I'm speaking from the viewpoint of an African American, the colonized people. You gave it to them. So that once again, like that's why I say the foundation of every fucking African -American, thing. African American, and African black don't even know that have two oil refining. What other race have that in this country? Two oil refining, how high four million people who have that? The Jews don't have it. The Italians don't have it. Who well, have what black? You said a black man has an oil refiner? Two man. Two. In this country, black black companies have two oil refining in this country. I don't no know that at all. I know it because you don't read. <laughs> That's yeah, I'm supposed to read it at though. <laughs> Tell me where to read it at, and I'll read it. Because I read all the time, brother. There's always a book around me. There's a book right there. Tell me where to read it from. Any union, 256, all that guy. So I got to read union books? And, and stuff to find all this out. See, I got to read books about a trade or a business to find out specifics on that trade and that business. Yes. Okay. A lot of people don't understand that, man. Yeah, but see, aren't you in that business? Yeah, I'm in that business. All right, then. That's your business. You're reading about your own business. I'm just saying, a lot of blacks don't understand that. You know what I mean? I ain't gonna lie, I ain't never heard that. And there's only two of them? Because you don't read. There's only two of them? I want to say he doesn't read. No, I don't read what his profession is. He's in the profession of business, of property and real estate and oil, so he studies what he's doing in the profession of the studying. Well, and I respect you, that. Yeah, you should study all that. I study a lot of shit. I bet you I could tell you some shit your ass don't know either. <laughs> and age don't always come with wisdom. I give you that too. That's a fact. I'll tell you that right now. Mm -hmm. But yeah. Okay. What do you think of building? I don't have nothing here. You talking about building, building? anything? High rise. Well, this is my point. Hold up. This is my point. Hold up. This is my point. But nobody's getting. Wait, wait, wait. wait. This is my point. This is my point. You talking this bullshit Wait a second. Wait a second. Economic. How you know what I'm building? You don't know shit about what I'm building. Hold on. Wait a second. Come on. I, I can give a black man a billion dollars. If he don't know what the fuck he is, what he gonna do with the billion dollars? <laughs> he gonna buy European cars. He gonna you take business with European men. He gonna wear European suits. What's and he's gonna continue. That? What do you mean what's wrong with that? That's keeping the wealth of accumulation in European bank accounts. No if I buy an Armani suit, where's the money going? Is it going to a black or mining company? You got some black or mining company. There we go. Exceptions. <laughs> Remember I was telling you about exceptions? Right. Exceptions yeah, justify things we don't want to understand. You don't understand why? You got to have a form of knowledge of self as a foundation before you want. I could give anybody a billion dollars today. Any black man. If I give him a billion dollars, what's that billion dollars going to turn out to with him not knowing what the hell he is? He's only going to do what he was doing. You see what I'm saying? He's only going to do what he was doing. I get what you're saying. But you talking about you. How many niggas live like you? How many black men live like you? A lot. A lot? And compared to the white men that do? Equal? Is it equal? It's equal? So there's the same amount of wealth black men on this planet as there is wealth white men on this planet? And I ain't talking rich, because rich ain't got nothing to do with it. Rich is irrelevant. We're talking about wealth. We've got a lot of wealthy black men in this country. We're not talking about a lot. We're talking about there's 8 billion people on this planet. And that percentage, how many people on this planet out of 8 billion are considered wealthy that look like you from the place you're from, American, all of that, compared to a European? You know, That's equal? You know, I was born in the Bahamas. Wherever you born, so, it's, it's a question. question. Let me tell you something. You, you should come to that Bilal and see what the black change. dude. Yeah. Right. And see, you need change, you ain't even, yeah. yeah, what the hell, I need $20, what the fuck do you think I'm Come on, man, you a billionaire, man. I should get that $5. Shoot, all that money about? you making, all that oil refineries. You know what, I was about to walk out here with that thing, now when I think about it. Oh, well, you still here. You, you I'm just saying, brother, you know, you gotta have knowledge yourself before you do anything. Yo, how much? Um, uh, 13. But yes, the point of the matter is, you can't do shit without knowing what the fuck you are. If you don't know what the hell you are, 
and I give you all the money in the world, you're what are you going to do, gonna do you, with you're the only money? Do what you were taught. Even if, even if you say, oh, I'm going to start black schools everywhere. What curriculum are you putting in the school? Whose curriculum are you putting in the school? What tax base are you using for the school? You see what I'm saying? It all boils down to you knowing the foundation of where your mindset is coming from and then what you're going to do with the aspects that come with that. See, if, I, if you already know what the hell you are and what the hell you did, automatically you would find ways to imitate what you did, not imitating what he does. You want to build a school that's like Harvard for black people. Now you call it AMP or uh, AS, whatever they, the initials for that means trade school. But what are you doing? You're copying the curriculum of a white school. Where do your taxes go? It goes back into a tax pays white government. Where does all your money go? It goes back into the structure of the same political white government. It keeps recycling itself. They don't give a fuck about you starting businesses. You know why? Because you will always pay their taxes, right. and you will always buy their material, right. and you will always imitate their brands but and that's designs. that's because it's their country. Well, no, it's not their country. That's another wrong aspect. That's another wrong aspect. It's but not their <laughs> country. And that, once again, comes without having a foundation because if each one I, of us... I already, I already understood what you were getting, where you, where you're getting with this. It's I'm not their saying, country. At this present time, they run this shit. And see, ugh. Now, see, I don't like to project words like that into the air because what, what, we're what we're doing, they run this shit. It's theirs, this. It's theirs. No, no it's at not. At this present time. At this present time. Whatever present time you want to claim, I don't claim that. All I claim is that they have programmed your mind. That's it. Uh, that's all. That's the only. That's the only small source of power I will allow myself to give them. That's it. Because any other attention of power that I give them make them more powerful. Because I am their source of energy and power. My attention to look like some white nigga is their power. My intention to dress like some white nigga is their power. My intention to work for some white nigga that's their power. Anything that I'm doing in order to imitate them gives them more power and sustains their survival on this planet, just like we've always have. I could go into the beginning of dynasties with Menes and Tutmos where we feeding these motherfuckers on outside provinces of kingdoms and keeping them alive while they still trying to invade your ass. But we would sustain them and they would grow stronger with our sustaining them and eventually we would assimilate with them and then they would destroy shit. We do it all the time and they've been doing it for centuries and we still allow it because we project our humanity onto beasts. Can you, you give me some examples that? that I remember we went into this vaguely when we were outside but I just wanted to, I wanted to ask you for some examples. Examples of what? Uh, you know, just What I just said? Yeah. Pessimeticus. I can spell that for you, you can Google them. Pessimeticus was one of the last so-called pharaohs. By the way, pharaoh comes from the Hyksos invasions. That was their language. We never called each other pharaohs. We called each other niggas, N-E-G-U-S, which is funny because we walk around saying nigga all day. But anyway, Pessimeticus was one of the last pharaohs who assimilated the Libyans who were white motherfuckers on the outside provinces out of Egypt, out of the kingdom, because we didn't let them in. When he assimilated them, they eventually mixed in with the population and destroyed the civilization. That was one of the first invasions into, um, no, excuse me, that was after the Hyksos. So the, the Hyksos was the first invasion. But the Hyksos wasn't purely white, they were Asiatic. So you can't count them. Then after Pessimiticus came the Greeks. The Greeks came in three, 330 BC. That's like yesterday. That's not even a long time ago. No, I'm, for real, for, I'm serious. That's like, because if the Greeks came in 330 BC, but many um, established the first dynasty in 3800 BC, that's 35,000 years, excuse me, 3,500 years before the Greeks came. You understand what I mean? That's why I, when I say that's yesterday, that's, the, that's what I mean by that. You see what I'm saying? So by the time the Greeks came, Egypt was already fucked up. We've been invaded by the Persians. We've been invaded by the Hyksos. We've been invaded by, um, well, the Hebrews came in for help. But we've already been invaded multiple times, and we've already been amalgamated multiple times, so we was already kind of fucked up. And not only that, when um, Alexander the Greek or the gay came, he came after a time where we was under such turmoil from the Persians and all these other invaders that we actually welcomed him to an extent because we wanted any other conqueror that was going to be a slightly little bit more, um, how would you say, benign. You know what I'm saying? So... There's so many, um, the canal that separates 
the so-called Middle East. That's another funny thing. Where's the Middle North? Where's the Middle West? Where's the Middle South? Why is there only a Middle East? Because you don't know what to call that area that used to be Northeast Africa. But you don't want to call it Northeast Africa. Where Ethiopians, ancient Ethiopian Kushites, or the real name Abyssinians, settled Mesopotamia, Arabia, all these different places. But you don't want to give us credit for that, so you'll call it something else. But anyway, we separated that part because we knew that the Asiatic hordes that kept trying to invade our kingdoms were beast-like, they were savages, they were nomads, which is another reason why they weren't sedentary like we were. They didn't have kingdoms because they always had to keep moving from place to place in order to survive. Because where they came from, close to the Caucasus Mountains or in the Caucasus Mountains, because all of them lived different places. Some of them lived on the outside of the steppes of the Caucasus. Some of them lived in the Caucasus. Some of them lived in the West, in the East, so on and so forth. But they were still in areas where agriculture wasn't plentiful, seasons wasn't plentiful. But it was a lot of things that wasn't plentiful. So therefore, they had to keep remaining in a nomadic type of lifestyle in order to survive which also began to cultivate a warrior like lifestyle to where every time you invaded somebody you had to learn how to fight better than them so they became great warriors and nomads and then eventually when they reached us one thing people don't understand is the first few dynasties of Egypt was settled by Sudanese or Ethiopian kings and in Ethiopia came the warriors the warriors were from Ethiopia so this is why we were able to keep them out of the kingdom for so long until the 1500s of BC when the Hyksos came in. But before then, remember I told you, the, the first dynasty was settled around 35, 3800 BC. So we was able to keep it all black and all safe for about 2000 years. And then finally the Hyksos was one of the very first to invade and actually be there for about 100 years. You see what I'm saying? So we don't know this history of, and then we could go into like, oh, I'm, I'm, st I'm st um, keep talking about Egypt. We could go into Mali, Sungai. We could go into all these different kingdoms, nations, and empires that fought all so many European um, colonizers and settlers for so long. We could go into Makeda. People don't even understand that Alexander the Greek wanted to rule the world. But people don't understand why he stopped at Egypt. He didn't stop at Egypt for choice. He stopped at Egypt because his army was defeated. His army was defeated by a queen named Makeda, or Makeda. And people don't understand that she's based off the so-called Queen of Sheba. But Sheba is a land, it's not a person. See, they distort the history on purpose because they don't want to give you credit for certain things that make you great. And the funny thing about it is, she destroyed his army with armies of gorillas, with armies of um, pure-breaded hawks. Like, they would breed hawks twice to three times the size of them naturally. Yes, that's serious. Twice to three times the size of them naturally. And they would train them to drop iron spears from the sky. <laughs> now, hold up. Have you ever heard about Hannibal or um, Hannibal Barker? I heard the term. Okay. The name. To give you a predis, uh, predisense, I don't even know if I'm using that word right, but to give you an aspect of where it was done again in much later times, Hannibal Barker used elephants like tanks. He used to use elephants and charge armies of elephants to, to trample men like tanks. See, all of this stuff came with, you got to understand, we are a spiritual people and we are connected to everything and especially women. So we knew how to control animals without um, capturing them and locking them in zoos and in homes. We knew how to control them and use them to where they wanted to be part of us and wanted to be part of our armies and our kingdoms, but we didn't have to trap them. We didn't have to lock them in cages. We didn't have to keep them as pets. They were in the kingdom, on the outskirts of the kingdom. They lived in the wilderness of the kingdom. So therefore, we was able to build armies and breed them in a way, the same way they bred us as slaves, by the way, breed them in a way to where we made gorillas stronger, we made falcons and hawks bigger. We made all of these things more powerful to the point where they were used in the benefit to protect our kingdoms. Number two, if you are a sedentary people, if you are a people that's used to living on the outskirts of the Nile or living on the equator itself where it's always constantly warm and where you have constant vegetation, you have enormous animal kingdoms, you don't want for nothing, why the fuck would you move anywhere? You're not a nomad. You actually are sedentary. You build a kingdom on top of where you've already been placed. 
which is why we had tremendous empires. We had Meroe, which they don't like to talk about, M-E-R-O-E. We had uh, all of Sudan was an entire empire, Ethiopia. Rastas talk about Ethiopia all the time because it's one of the oldest um, empires that lasted for so goddamn long, and the real name is Abyssinia. Ethiopian is another Greek name, just like Egypt is a Greek name. The real name is Kemet or Tamari. But we had kingdoms for so goddamn long that for any dumbass cockazoid to come around talking about Greeks or Roman is absolutely ridiculous. And the only reason why it's being accepted is because we don't study shit. The Greeks came so much longer later down the line. And not only that, they're the offshoot of the Ionians and the Minoans and the Crete civilization. And what they did was they came down with their barbaric ass, as usual, raped and slaughtered the men, excuse me, slaughtered the men and raped the women. And when you rape a black woman and you're white, what do you come out with? You come out with a mixed breed. Then those mixed breeds amalgamated and you have more mixed breeds until they're lighter. Because if you look at a Greek, even if you look at old statues, they always had curly, curly hair and they were always very light skinned, but they weren't real white people. The real white, and there's another thing Europeans don't want to admit because if they admit that, then they can't take um, credit for civilizations that they didn't create. But the only real white man is the Nordic the German, and the Scandinavian. That's it. All the rest of them have drops of your melanin in them, which is why they have olive skin, light skin, curly hair. That's why. A Spaniard is not a white man. He's a European, technically, but he's not a white man. Uh, Armenia is not. Look at Kim Kardashian. We call her a white girl, right? But she got a body like a black woman. She, she got lips like a black woman. Yeah. But see, we don't look at it like that because we've been so colonized where they taught us that First, at one time, they taught you that 32nd of Negro blood makes you Negro. Then after you started studying a little bit and coming into some realization that there was many civilizations that was extremely great, now they started saying, okay, this person was white, that person. A lot of people don't know Selassie was documented as a fucking white man because he was king of Ethiopia. So they documented how anything that was royal or important, they just whitewashed it or labeled it as white because they follow a paper trail. That's all they do. They follow paper trails. Yeah, That's why they invented the patent office. The patent office will take something that you invented and create a paper trail saying you didn't invent shit. You see what I'm saying? But I, I'm going forever about examples and history. We could go all the way up to today and still talk about their beastly genetics that's in them. Tuskegee experiment. Tuskegee experiment stopped on paper around 9389. Tuskegee experiments when they injected you with syphilis, gonorrhea, and every goddamn venereal disease you can imagine and sent you back into the community so you could go have sex with your women. Before that, eugenics. Eugenics was when they would sterilize you and say that you were an imbecile so they didn't want you to breed. They didn't say they were doing it to only black people. They said they were doing it to the imbecile. And wait a second, at that time, who was the most educated people? wasn't your black ass. You was the imbecile. So instead of saying we are sterilizing all people of color, they're saying we're sterilizing imbeciles so we won't have to be burdened with them, their children in the future. That's eugenics. You can look all of this up. These is just, these Tuskegee experiment was 20 years ago and they still doing it to the day. It's just not out in the open. Tuskegee experiment was in the open. They used to have flyers and shit like, oh, you got bad blood black people? Come to the hospital and get free shots. You know what I'm they used to have posters. Eugenics. They used to have posters of eugenics promoting eugenics. Come to the hospital, get free sterilization. What? And we were dumb enough to line up because why? Everything this caucasoid offers you, you take it because you want to be them subconsciously. You bleach your skin, you change your eye color, you fucking burn your hair, you wear all European outfits all fucking day for the rest of your life. You'll pay thousands of dollars for a European shirt. You'll drive a Bugatti. You'll do anything to be European. But say that you're black or say that you're not in love with Europeans. But your actions contradict that. But what is that? I don't blame nobody. That's colonization. That's colonization in your mind. And us as Americans on American soil, we have a double whammy because we have Willie Lynchism and colonization. And people don't understand that. Willie Lynchism is in your DNA. Willie Lynchism is Explain one of them. Huh? Explain that. I'm going to. Willie Lynchism 
is a man named Willie Lynch, who at the time of the height of the slave trade or slavery on this soil, they wrote to the man who was the most successful plantation owner, and his name was Willie Lynch. They wrote to him begging him for some type of blueprint to control their slaves, because at this time, when you were first over here or brought over here, and that's a whole nother thing that we could go into with the slave trade itself, but when you was first used as a slave, the first generations of slaves were the most rebellious because they knew who they were. If I rip you out your house right now and say your, your name is not Mutaga, what's your name again, brother? Okay. Mutaga. Your name is not Mutaga. You mean, yes it is, nigga, what you talking about? You know what I'm saying? You gonna have a fight with me about that. Definitely. But your baby that you give birth to right. don't know that. Definitely. So that's Definitely. the easiest one to enslave. So our hardest, excuse me, not our, the plan, the slave plantation owners, their hardest um, job was how to make the first generations of slaves submissive. So they literally beat those slaves to death a lot of times. Now, remember, slavery is a business and your slave is your product. So if you beat your slave to death, you're losing money. So there were so many killings and beatings to death that they needed to find a solution. And their solution was the Willie Lynch blueprint. And it worked like a fucking charm. And just like Willie Lynch wrote to them on paper, you can still get the My you can little still sister get the letter. had that paper and I read it the other day. You can still get the letter to this day. He said with this instrument and this blueprint, we can make the Negro enslave himself and his kids for generations for at least 500 years. We got about 200 years left. Because that shit was done to us in the 1700s. And do we not see it? Our black people aren't the only goddamn people that are so commonly used to not having no fathers, having homes that are fatherless, not wanting to do nothing representing yourself, your woman thinking she's a man and a woman at the same time. This comes from Willie Lynchism. And plus the fact that we all pretty much hate each other. We can't yes. accept each other's accomplishments. In fact, sometimes I've seen, I've, seen, I've read some also something interesting saying that a lot of times African Americans, they will insult you with superficial things saying the how close you look to an African. They would use that as an insult. Shut up, you, you black, like crusty, African, African booty scratcher. Like, da, da, da. That's how we used to curse as kids to each other when I was I, a kid. I got that plenty of times. You get you, you dark, crusty ass, nappy hit. My, both my parents are from 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 Guinea, so I now mean, go to, to before I forget jumping on something you just said. Right. You know they had a law called Notorious Manumission. Don't ask me how to spell it, but it's known as called Notorious Manumission, and that was a law that rewarded any Negro or any slave for telling mm -hmm. on another slave. Mm -hmm. This was a law. So just think about two hundred to three hundred years of being rewarded. On your brother. For telling on your brother or telling on any revolutionary act that could come. Now think about what that does to your genetics, your DNA, and your and your psychology as a black person. You going on jobs today. How fast is niggas on jobs quick to throw you under the bus so they can get the promotion? How fast does that happen? How fast does your best friend who's your co-worker turn around and lie or turn around and not tell the truth on you just so that you can get fired? And then turn around and go, man, that was messed up. You still want to kick it and go to the club? But he just got your job now. That came from that aspect. I'll give you another one. There was a law called Casual Killing Act. Now, you never heard of that one before? It's yeah. called the Casual Killing Act. This was a law installed during the time of slavery because they used to beat you so bad sometimes that they would kill you. So in order to take the guilt away from the murderer, who was most of the time white women, they would beat mulatto slaves to death because they knew that the mulatto slave was the child of usually their husband. All right. So most of the time it had to do with white women beating slaves to death. So in order to protect the white women for receiving any type of punishment whatsoever, they created a law called the Casual Killing Act, which allowed them to casually kill you and get away with it. Because all you had to say was that you were rectifying them or that you were in fear. All right. Now wait a second. Does that sound familiar to something called Stand Your Ground in uh, Florida, I believe, or whatever other states it's in? Because there was a black woman who tried to use Stand Your Ground with her husband who had priors of beating on her. She shot a gun into the air, didn't touch him, and she was arrested. 
and she did time. But Stand Your Ground was used to kill Trayvon Martin. When, I don't get it. When aren't we all citizens? Aren't I equal to a white man? Oh, wait a second. Am I three-fifths of a human being? Oh, don't know that. Because that's written in the Constitution. Yeah, that. Three-fifths of a that. person. But what person are they talking about? Are they talking about the white man? What person are they referring to? They're referring to your black ass. But due to legalities, they don't say three-fifths black people are. They say there are people that are three-fifths of persons. That's it. Who that is? That depends on the court system. And this is why you have to reclaim nationality. You have to reclaim indigenous nationality because we are on this soil before the 13 colonies was began and the 13 colonies was settled and the president of the, of the 13 colonies was John Hansen, who was a black man who was a Moor. He was elected the president. They don't want to tell you that. It was also five to six other presidents that were black. They don't want to tell you that either. You see what I'm saying? Because they want to erase any form of history that gives you the slightest bit of empowerment as a black person. Because as soon as you start to spark or you pull one string, you begin to dig more. And here's the problem. When you dig more, you find more. And the deeper the you dig, well, you know, it's a problem, problem for them. them. Yeah. <laughs> the deeper you dig, the more niggery shit gets, the blacker it gets, the darker it gets, the bigger the noses get, the bigger the lips get, the nappier the hair gets. And that's why they can't stand that shit. They can't stand it. They tell you that the earth is 6,000 years from a Christian point of view. But they have a skeleton called Lucy that's 2.4 million. I'm probably wrong on the exact, but I know it's millions of years. 2.4, 2.3 million years old. And they've have already documented that it's a black woman. A black woman already at the stage of homo sapien sapien. Now what is homo sapien sapien? That's you right now. Right. But wait a second, that's two million years ago. And they say the Neanderthal, who is not a homo sapien sapien, was 20,000 years ago. Two million years ago and 20,000 years, that's a pretty big gap. But don't they say we all come from this Darwinis, Darwinism form of evolution where we all came from monkeys? So wait a second, if that's true, why did I find a black woman carbon dated at two million years old that possessed the same phenotype and physical skeletal structure of a homo sapiens sapien, which is a human, but yet I can go to Europe and find the remains of Neanderthals that only date back 20 to 30,000 years ago? Who just got here? Not only that, who just got here and who was just grafted? Because they went from Neanderthal to Cro-Magnon. What's Cro-Magnon? Cro-Magnon is your caveman that you see on the commercial. So easy a caveman can do it. That's a Cro-Magnon. A Neanderthal is a creature. That's the motherfucker that's like Bigfoot. You didn't come from that. So how are you gonna walk around and tell me I'm equal? That we all the same? That's a lie. And then if we don't even think about it in that perspective, if we go down to the biological anatomy, cellular structure, you're still not the same. If we go down to the pigmentation, you're still not the same. If we go into the brain, you're still not the same. You have 12 melanin centers on top of your brain stem right now. They have two to four tops. <laughs> the melanin you possess in your body as we speak is selenium-based melanin. Meaning. The small, meaning that it's of a organic structure. It's of a not chemical but organic structure like uh hmm. if you notice most words that start with o-r-g are like very organic orgasm you know those are they're very powerful words because um organite which is a form of energy you have organite magnetism and electricity these are the only three forms of energy on a planet a planet any planet including this one organite is the highest form then you have magnetism, then you have electricity. Now, they've done something which is called ELF, extra low frequency electricity. That's even lower than the three I just named. That's man-made, that's man-created. They did that on purpose. That's what your iPhone is ran on. That's what all this shit is ran on, extra low frequency. What's extra low frequency? Since the frequency is extra low and you're sitting your ass in front of it every day and it's 
it's, it's um, uh, 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 radiating your balls, radiating the side of your head. Women put it in a bra. Oh, I wonder why breast cancer went up for a couple of years. Women put their phones in a bra, not understanding that it's radiating their damn breasts all day. Right. Extra low frequency is negative chemical type of frequency. It, it's, it's, it's reversal. It's, it's bad for you. Organite is the highest form. It's giving. It's, it's productive. It's expanding. We don't run on organite no more. The whole planet does not run on organite no more. Now, you can get forms of organite too, though. Um, magnetism, that's the second best. Magnetism's beautiful. And what's funny is the woman in herself is magnetism. The man is electric. So when we come together, what do we make? Repeat that. <laughs> I'm sorry. The woman's energy. Remember, everything has a polarity. Nothing. Everything. Right. All animals have feminine and masculine principles. Electricity have negative and um, positive poles. Mm -hmm. Everything has a form of polarity. Up, down, left, right, black, white, everything's a polarity. Right. The woman, her frequency and her feminine energy is magnetism. Your masculine energy and frequency is electrical. So when y'all come together, y'all make another form of frequency called electromagnetism. Magnetism is one of the second best forms of energy that you can get on this earth. I don't know if you know, but the Japanese have made a train that runs off magnets. It was like one of the fastest trains they ever created because the rail itself... They call it a bullet train, no? Something like something that. Like I think that, they right? made an even better version. I think, that, uh, version. If watch the I think movies, they made a the better version, thing, though. It just goes yeah, really fast. It doesn't touch. It doesn't touch. There's no friction. Because remember, I think I've seen it if you take a magnet, once again, we're talking about polarity again. If you take two magnets, you have a North Pole and a South Pole, they attract naturally. Right. That's where we get this term, opposites attract. Definitely. But if I reverse one of them, they they'll never touch. Away. Right. So that's how it works. They, they use an electrical aspect to reverse one of the poles so the tracks never touch. And therefore, you glide on air. And that's how they move so fast. That's how it works. Now, that's funny, because we just explained that in a scientific aspect. So if I take the masculine principle, which is naturally in the divine design of a man, and the feminine principle, which is naturally in the divine design of a woman, and I reverse one of them, what happens? They're going to repel away from one. We don't last in relationships. We don't stay together. Somebody's gay now. Somebody's a lesbo now. This is science. This is not preference. This is not opinions right now. This is scientific fact. If you're a man, what kind of woman are you looking for? If you're, excuse me, excuse me, let me, let me rectify that. If you're a heterosexual, <laughs> masculine <laughs> man, uh -huh. what kind of woman are you looking for? What kind of woman is your dream woman? My dream woman? You know, what's, what, you, what's you a want me to... woman? <laughs> uh, you know, the woman that you're attracted to attractive. and you can see yourself with. What is she? I mean, I could just say she's a woman. I mean, I, I could. What's your definition of a woman? I mean, obviously, if I can, I feel like if I can naturally identify, if I look at a woman, well, if I look at a person and she has feminine characteristics, like curves, obviously, like obviously, you know, uh, shape of the uterus, so uh, you can That's notice physical. that breasts and things like that. So, as a man, you can look at it and say that. that's definitely a woman. So. I think that's also naturally, I believe, I know that's the person I'm supposed to... What energy are you attracted to? Oh, okay, I, I get what you're saying. What, what, what Do you, what, you what, if you go on a first date, uh -huh. you're a heterosexual masculine man. Right. You sit down on a first date. She, man, body's banging, curves out the head, breasts, mm -hmm. beautiful breasts, beautiful. She is gorgeous. Mm -hmm. You sit down with her, y'all start eating. She's sitting like this. Yeah, so like I was saying, know what I mean? Yo, you gonna eat that? No. Automatically, automatically, in your body as a man. She's beautiful. Right. She has all your physical aspects you like. She even right. dresses like a woman. Right. But what has now happened after she has projected an energy that is contradictive to her anatomy as a woman? That would confuse me and I would probably wouldn't want to... Uh, you wouldn't be attracted to her, right? No. The same aspect of a woman. See, women walk around talking this bullshit, leave the gaze alone, da 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 da. But no woman wants an extremely feminine, faggy man for her husband. They want a strong man that can provide and protect you. 
But yet they're going to turn around and tell you, leave the faggots alone. Mm-hmm. Hey, I mean, I have no problem leaving them that. alone. I just, I don't want to have anything. You know, I, I'm just making a point. Right. Because by nature, nature, not no man-made shit, not no nigga sitting down writing this, I didn't write this, I didn't make this up. By nature, you are attracted to your polarity. I believe that, for sure. Period. Okay. There is no animal on this planet that is within the feminine principle of itself and is attracted to the feminine principle of itself. It don't exist. Or the masculine, whichever one you want to use. It don't exist. But what have they programmed you to think now? What have they programmed you to accept, to believe, to understand, to to feel connected to? It's okay who your sexual orientation is. It doesn't matter. We're all equal. I find that hilarious because you keep telling me that men and women are equal. But if a bitch kick my ass, she's the shit, strong and independent, you go girl, don't take that shit. But if I sneeze on her ass, where am I going? <laughs> I'm going to fucking jail. And guess what I am for life? Guess what I am for life? Yo, woman beater. I'm a woman beater. <laughs> How dare you lay your hands on a woman? Are you crazy? What kind of man are you? Oh, but whoa, 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 hold up. <clears throat> We're equal. We're exactly equal. Now, <laughs> if a man disrespects me, and I get into a fist fight with a man, and I win, damn, man, you fucked that nigga up. <laughs> you got some hands, dog. Man get in a fight with me, I get my ass beat. Damn, son, you need to step up your hand game. Right. Woman gets into a fight with me, I win. Damn, man, you a bitch-ass nigga. What kind of nigga? Yo, yo, that's my word. I'm going to fuck you. Is that equality? That's not equality. But yet they keep projecting this contradictive aspect of equality, which does not exist. And it really never did exist when you're thinking on a physical standpoint and on a biological standpoint and a sexual standpoint. It never existed. But why are they teaching you that now? Because they want to destroy your foundation as man and woman so you stop procreating. And not only that, who you got to go to when you can't create a child? Who do faggots go to when they want a baby? They're going to go to, well, you said five. They either got to adopt yeah. or they got to do insemination. Every time they do you're that, saying, you say a gay a gay couple as a anybody. male, anybody. But no, because you said a male gay couple, so I was like, I, I can't. Think anybody, of All right. two dykes, two men, a bitch that don't want to touch a man for the rest of her life, but she claims she's not gay. Where she gotta go? She has to get inseminated. I she has to go son, right? anything. She has to get inseminated. She has to go to a doctor of European teaching, and she has to purchase, buy, or have insurance for some form of operation or some form of insemination. Now, what does that boil down to? Control of knowing when you're ready to populate. See, niggas in the projects can have five, six, ten babies and nobody could really know. But guess what you are gonna know? The population's going up. But when you turn all of us into homos, or you turn all of us into confused people who don't want relationships anymore, or who don't wanna have normal sex, when we finally wanna, hey, well, honey, I wanna start a family. When we finally want to do that, where we got to go? We got to go to the doctor. We got to go to adoption agencies. We got to go outside of ourselves to create a family. That is abnormal. It's not normal. And they're trying to teach us and make us believe that that is the way it should be. What else is that a form of? Population control. It's just another form of it. Because... Now, I got to tell a doctor, well, doc, I've been thinking, maybe I want twins. Oh, that'll be double. (laughs) What the fuck? Oh, doc, I I want a boy with green eyes. Oh, really? Okay, well, green eyes, that's a little expensive. It's like buying a fucking car now. Because if you buy a red car, your insurance goes up. You see what I'm saying? But all I'm talking about right now is they know your science and you don't study your science. So, therefore, they use your science and nature against you. And because you don't know your history, you don't know the science of life itself, you don't know universal law, which is the only law that exists, no other law exists. And here's the funny thing, universal law comes from the seven laws of Jehudi, who the Caucasoid of the Greek likes to call Hermes Trismegistus. One of the laws that is a universal law is the law of gender. That's a law of the universe, not of the earth. But of the universe, the law of gender, everything must have a masculine and feminine together. Even when they want to, beasts wanted to, oh, you guys were pagans. 
guys believed in all these gods. Da -da. But guess what? Talk all the shit you want to talk, but every god had a goddess. Every god. Asar had Aset, and they gave birth to Heru. That's the original Holy Trinity. But why in their religion? Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Where's the pussy? Where's the pussy? Oh, Mary, was she a whore? Why are you constantly debasing, or excuse me, um, degrading the existence of the feminine energy and principle? Why? Because you worship the phallus. Their culture is based in homosexuality and worshiping the phallus. That's why they never gave respect to certain goddesses. They never. Our first worshiping of gods was a goddess, Het Heru. Then we went on the first male deity that we began to worship was called Pata. And he was, and that's where the word father comes from, by the way, too. It was called Pata. And he was called the erector or the architect. That was the first male god. Then it went on to Amun Ra and Ra. And Amun Ra is just a combination of Ra and Amun. Then you had Atun or Atun, which was before them too. But so I can go on forever about all this shit, man. I don't want to, you know. You look tired, dog. So, no, I'm not tired, but know, see, it's, my it's, phone's it's been, a lot, been man. my phone's been ringing. I'm sure, it's, I'm sure. It's Pick it up. Right now. Nah, man. <laughs> my young brother, my recorder. What's up, man?